At the beginning of this, I told you that the Housatonic River was boring, and if you watched part one of this documentary, then you realize that that was a complete lie. And if you haven't watched part one, then go look into the videos of the Berkshire Spotlight Facebook page. But I'm about to use that word again to describe the multinational conglomerate that totally the Housatonic River. GE is boring. There's no twist coming. General Electric is really, really boring. They've built jet engines, x-ray machines, invented radio broadcasting, televisions, nuclear power, nuclear bombs. They even sponsored the Boston Celtics. They've supported the cartel, filed the largest tax return in the history of the world, and it was co-founded by American icons like Thomas Edison and J.P. Morgan. Amazingly, they've done all those things while managing to be so incredibly dull and uninteresting. But we sort of have to talk about them, and you probably know why. From 1932 to 1977, a total of approximately 45 years, General Electric's Pittsfield plant was dumping its waste, consisting in part of polychlorinated biphenyls, into the Housatonic River. I imagine the discussion went something like this. So we're producing all this chemical waste, what should we do with it? Well, we could just dump it in the river. Ha 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 ha. No, seriously. It's at this point, unfortunately, where the story of the Housatonic River becomes largely about its pollution. I mean, it's bad enough to be polluted with mercury, but PCBs too? It's a lot for one river to take. Wait, mercury? There's mercury in it too, what? Let's travel back in time a little bit and talk about hats. Have you ever heard the phrase mad as a hatter? Well, this actually originates from 19th century hat making factories that would use mercury to create the felt inside of hats. As a result of this highly toxic substance being used every day by the workers in those factories, they eventually started to go, well, mad. And what city in the 19th century was known as the hat capital of the world? Danbury, Connecticut. Located directly upon the Housatonic River. And all these factories, like GE, found themselves with chemical waste, looked at the river, and thought, eh, why not? So our Connecticut friends along the Housatonic are also unable to enjoy the river as was once possible. Okay, thanks for humoring me on a brief trip across the state line, let's get back on track. While GE is going to take a lot of heat for the remainder of this series, it's important to mention that they're not alone. The town of Hinsdale, for example, would just dump its domestic waste directly into the river, and the town of Lanesboro's septic tanks were known to frequently overflow and run into the river. But as we moved into the second half of the 1900s, consequences began to show themselves. In 1952, a man's flooded basement contained small amounts of oil, which was later traced to the GE factory. In 1970, a riverside farm in Lenox found alarming levels of PCBs in the milk produced by its cows. They were moved to a neighboring field and those levels dropped. In 1974, scientists discovered that chickens that have been exposed to PCBs face serious health and reproductive risks. This ongoing research leads the federal government to ban the manufacturing of PCBs altogether in 1977, citing, quote, harmful health effects, end quote. Also in this year, residents of Massachusetts and Connecticut are instructed to not consume fish from the river. And that really makes one ponder the reality that from 1932 to 1977, the many fishers of the Housatonic would have no reason to not eat their PCB-contaminated fish. In 1997, after further research, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency ordered GE responsible to remediate the site. What? In 1999, they began this process, starting at the plants themselves. And for the next 20 years, they continued to slowly but surely clean up the river one section at a time. As of right now, the 12 and a half mile stretch from the GE plant to Lennoxdale's Woods Pond is estimated to have anywhere from 100,000 to 600,000 pounds of PCB in its sediment. And as for the health effects, well, let's take a look at this wonderful video. PCBs, according to the EPA, are a probable human carcinogen, meaning they probably cause cancer. But studies have also shown negative effects on immune, reproductive, and neurological health. So how is one exposed? 
PCBs can enter the body through consumption, breathing, and skin contact. Once they enter the body, they stay there, meaning that consistent exposure is where the true danger lies, as those levels could build over time. Very well said if I say so myself. So this is all really simple, right? GE created the problem and they need to fix the problem. Removing PCBs is a difficult process, but they can do it and God knows they have the money for it. Well, like with most things, it's never as simple as it seems. In 2016, GE, the EPA, Lee Lennox, Stockbridge, a variety of other towns, and a bunch of independent organizations began to make progress on a new agreement to clean the previously mentioned 12 and a half mile strip. And everything that I've previously said in these two videos have only been for the purpose of getting us to this moment. This is where things get more dramatic, more controversial, more toxic, and more important than they've ever been. Let's talk about the rest of River Agreement. 